From North Community High School in Minneapolis, we proudly present High School Boys Basketball. It's the first boys broadcast of the year, and we've got a doozy with the 7-1 Eden Prairie Eagles, the number four team in Class 4A, taking on the Minneapolis North Polars, the number two team in Class 2A. The Polars at 3-1. Greetings, I'm Mike Beaton, and making her broadcast debut is two-time state tournament champion and Minneapolis North graduate, Tisa Mitchell. Tisa, thanks for putting your ego on the line today. <laughs> thanks for having me, Mike. <laughs> now, Minneapolis North did play a lot of games in December. Uh, one game was dropped, and with the merger of some Minneapolis teams, yeah. that also affected the conference schedule. So yes. this yes. is a North team that has had a staggered start. On the downside, they don't have a lot of games to draw from. On the upside, they've had a lot of time to practice. Lots of time to practice. And as the girls coach, they practice right after us, so they're here just as much as we are. And they also held, hosted their annual holiday tournament, so that was tough competition they faced during the tournament. So I'm pretty sure they're ready. In that tournament, the Above the Rim Classic, they defeated Brooklyn Center, the number six team yes. in 2A, pretty handily. Brooklyn Center could be a potential section foe in section five double A. Minneapolis North getting it done with the likes of Taylor Johnson. I spoke with the coaching staff beforehand. They really like his development. And their anchor down low, his name is Biggs, but you, you can also call him Odell Wilson the fourth. I think he prefers Biggs. That being yeah. said, those two have been quite the tandem. How are those two giving North that sense of leadership this year? Oh, as seniors? Yes. They definitely have stepped up. Uh, last year they were a little quieter than they were this year because there was leadership before them but this year they've really they're more vocal you'll see Biggs is not a very loud guy but you'll see him talk more on the court you'll see Taylor kind of take over during the game there's also some young talent that's coming up which is uh, you have Trajan uh, Holloman that's really stepped up he when he gets in you also have uh, Nazir Elami which is done he's done an excellent job moving into a leadership role as well Trey will actually get the start tonight in this game, so he has moved along quite well as an eighth grader. Eden Prairie, David Flum, a man of few words when I spoke with him, but this is a team whose only loss was an overtime to Lakeville North, one of the perennials in Class 4A. They have a bevy of quality wins, including Edina, North St. Paul, and they have a strong sophomore class, David yeah. Dobbs and Austin Andrews. Even though we haven't seen Eden Prairie too much, now, Minneapolis North likes to schedule tough, and Eaton Prairie yes. has a lot of tough guys. Yeah, they're very tough. I don't know much about them either, but just looking at them, they're they're strong, they're physical. Watching all their games prior to the varsity game, they're going to play physical. They're going to be aggressive. They're going to shoot the lights out. That's what I'm expecting for this matchup. And you almost have to because they're in the late conference. You've yes. got Hopkins, Edina, you have to shoot. White Zeta. Yes, you have they're to be aggressive. They're all formidable teams. And you and I are going to learn a little bit about Eaton Prairie tonight after we're through. But beforehand, we've got the starting lineups. We'll take you to those and get things underway. You're watching High School Boys Basketball. And 
And with that, let's take a look at the starters for the visiting Eaton Prairie Eagles. It's Kyler Kluge, number two, the senior guard. Drake Dobbs, number 11, the sophomore guard. Connor Christensen, number 24, the sophomore forward. John Henry, number 31, the sophomore forward. And Austin Andrews, number 33, the sophomore forward. Minneapolis North starting Eli Campbell, number two, the junior guard. Taylor Johnson, number five, the senior guard. Nasir Elamine, number 12, the junior guard. Trajan Holloman, number 21, the eighth grade guard, and Odell Wilson, the fourth, number 32, the senior center. Hard to imagine that Odell Wilson, he's a senior now. I covered him back when he was an eighth grader when Larry McKenzie came in. Uh, Odell Wilson was one of his first uh, sets of players, and now he's a big senior. Literally a big senior. <laughs> He's, he's very big on the court. His presence will definitely be felt down low in the post. It's been great to watch uh, Biggs blossom into the post player that he is today. And Ty uh, Taylor Johnson, the younger brother of Tyler. It's interesting when you look at the two brothers, because Tyler, of course, we remember him and his athleticism. The North coaching staff, Trent Woods in particular, noted that while Tyler maybe is the more athletic of the two, they feel Taylor is the better basketball player. Either way, what Tyler did to galvanize this program, what he's doing now for the Gophers, is incredible. And it's great to see Taylor stepping up after being kind of a role player under his big brother when he started his varsity career. Yeah, he def definitely played his role. And now that he no longer is in his brother's shadow, he has definitely has stepped up. I really like the way his game has blossomed also. That's another uh, young one that's blossomed, Eli. He's definitely come out and has been able to shine. He's got a nice long jumper that we'll probably see today. I'll now. try to keep my cheering to a minimum. <laughs> I've known uh, Biggs and Trey since they were young, young children. So it's great to see them together on the court. And Trey's an eighth grader. There's a bit yes. of irony in that statement. But I was going to say, on your end, you played in this gym many times, of course. What is it about this school that, well, and the strong basketball tradition that they have here? Yep. What would you make of it? Oh, goodness. The phrase it takes a village is really what comes to my mind because there's lots of generations upon generations that have been a part of North. So it's almost like the one sibling or aunt or uncle, even sometimes parents, grandparents, they'll be at North and the children just remember those times and you just get used to coming to North. Because as you pointed out before the Open, two of those state championship banners for girls basketball, uh, you were partially responsible yes. for, 98-99. Yes. yes. And before then, uh, my sister was an older sister, nine years apart. She brought me to North with her. So there's, I've been here my entire life. <laughs> it takes a village. Well, and North with an extremely strong tradition in basketball. It, Faltered a little bit back in 2009 with a massive exodus, but Larry McKenzie came in, helped build this program up. It spread to football and track. The football team winning state in Class A a year ago, Tania Riley doing big things for the track team. But it's on the court now as we're underway. Odell Wilson yep. with the putback. With the putback, we're already feeling his, his size down low. Odell Wilson shooting just under 49% from the floor. EP in transition, hesitation move, and Elijah Campbell denies Connor Christensen. I think he actually got that with his foot more than his hands. I didn't know we were playing soccer. <laughs> actually, a lot of these North players are versatile athletes. There are many football crossovers. Three yeah. on the way. That's Drake Dobbs, and he missed everything. EP with the save. Kluge inside to Christensen. He gets the roll. One thing you will notice with that athleticism is North is able to get back on defense much quickly when you think there may be an open shot. Oh, no, Wilson, nothing called. Oh, yeah. 
Both teams highly balanced, though. They have four players in double digits in scoring. Three ball. Corner pocket. As expected. John Henry, your average is 11.8. As expected, there was no doubt that Eden Prairie would come out shooting and shooting accurately. And on North End, Taylor Johnson, she's scoring 23.8. That average bests what his brother did in his senior year. Of course, his brother had a talented senior class alongside him, Patrick Dembley and Isaac Johnson, who was a year below him. So many stars have come through this North program since Larry McKenzie brought them back from the depths. Dobbs for three. Yes. And EP showing their might early. Remember, they knocked off Lakeville North, well, lost to Lakeville North, but they've knocked off North St. Paul, a top 10 team in 4A, Edina. And Odell yeah. Wilson responsible for all six of North points. Biggs is really showing his growth in his game. Two years ago, he wouldn't have taken that shot. Dobbs can't break free. EP's biggest win, a 23-point victory over Minnehaha Academy, the number one team in 2A. We'll have that game for you, Minnehaha North, later this year. Elijah Campbell on the run, can't complete the fast break look, and the rebound to Austin Andrews. EP, they can run. Dobbs missed the three. EP, they've got some speedsters. Yeah, they do. Andrews goes in. Four different Eden Prairie players have scored already. Minneapolis North, it's all been coming from bigs, as they call them. Eden Prairie's Andrews is going to be tough down low. He's really strong. He's been really aggressive thus far. Part of a great sophomore class that's going to make the Lake Conference one of the best to watch in boys basketball this year. Andrews can't save it. Eden Prairie having a great start. Wyzetta. Wyzetta, of course, knocked off Hopkins a year ago in Section 6. Hopkins is always a perennial. And Edina, they held the number one spot in 4A for a week. I would jokingly suggested with Trent Woods as Wilson can't get the role that North could have stacked the non-conference schedule with late conference opponents and they all would have been must-see games. But they will get two of them, EP and Hopkins in February. Andrews can't get the reverse. Either that Andrews or Andrews again. Well, or maybe he intended to do that to pad his rebounding totals. <laughs> but second chance points are still points nonetheless. Campbell inside the bigs. Nice. <laughs> Timeout. Well, North time calling out a timeout. Even though North is down by four, I think Larry McKenzie would like to see a little more distribution. All the points have come from big so far. Well, no, Del Wilson not afraid to score. He's averaging 19 and a half. It's, it is nice to see Biggs get the ball and show what he's got. A lot of times, the guards on North take over the game, and Biggs, Biggs' points mainly come from cleanup points. And this is our first visit to North this year, but one thing that is probably going to be a better fit for them and everyone, they classed up the 2A, as did your girls team, because the last couple of years they just destroyed the Class A field, and Trent Wentz was telling me, you know, you feel bad for schools like Northwoods, Red Lake, but that was the designation they had at the time. Well, this year, you know, Minnehaha Academy, that game is going to be one to circle. Caledonia, a strong team. North with a better pool of competition now. Although it took them three years to get that first one with Larry McKenzie, who has six state tournament titles to his credit. Four at Patrick Henry and two here. Hoping to make it three. Connor Christensen. He's got it. And Omar Brown on the floor for the Polders, wearing number 13. Christensen launches the three. Eden Prairie has struggled from beyond the arc, but North throws it away right into the hands of Dobbs. Henry will fire. They're not giving up. Christensen will try it. Swish. <laughs> Swish. 
Eden Prairie has not let me down. I knew that they would come out. <laughs> I knew they would come out with the strong three-point shots, and they have. Well, North isn't going to back away just yet. Nasir Lamine unable to put it in. That being said, North has struggled a little bit. We're going to have a foul on Kyler Kluge. North has struggled a little bit against late conference teams. They had a home and home with Wyzetta, where the Trojans dominated. The Trojans having that tall team. And in the series with Hopkins, they've been close, but Hopkins has edged out Minneapolis North in both contests. So the late conference has been a thorn for Minneapolis North, but that's a staple of Larry McKenzie. Trent Woods told me many years ago if Larry wouldn't, wasn't allowed to schedule this top caliber competition, it would have been harder to convince him to take this job. He wants his players to face the best there is. That's why you'll see him take on Hopkins. That's why he's got that annual series with Minnehaha. EP, Caledonia. You get some other schools that might do one or two token non-conference teams. Uh, Larry McKenzie, his schedule resembles something you'd see out of a 4A school. Definitely. Definitely. He does schedule tough, and it prepares them for state tournament time. I would say so. And North has not come out very strong offensively. I don't know if their shot choices have been the best choices for their, for their game against Eden Prairie. Yeah, Dobbs aggressively taking the ball to the hoop. I knew that Eden Prairie would come out aggressive, and they, and they definitely have shown us that. Unable to complete the three-point oh. play was Drake Dobbs, but more free throws are coming. Austin Andrews getting after it. That was a quick, quick foul after that missed free throw. Austin Andrews averaging 17.9 a game. The season high was 33 in the win over North St. Paul at the tip-off classic. EP with the steal, Drake Dobbs blocked from behind and he took a hit. It was a great defensive play by an Elamine. You heard that all the way up here. Nothing was called, Elamine with a clean block, but Dobbs might be feeling that one for a while. And another great defensive play by Nazir Elamine. He stepping up and getting in position to take that charge. He draws the offensive foul. That being said, the Eagles have built a 19-8 lead. It takes great leadership to step up and sacrifice your body. Defensive-wise, you're not going to get that from all your players. Johnson to Brown, kick out to Elamine, fires the three, can't bank it in. Taylor Johnson will go to the line. Taylor, 58% free throw shooter. That's the one thing that North has struggled with since Larry came here. They have great athletes, but not the most accurate or free throw shooters. With a couple of Class A titles, you'll let that slide, but it, I find it amusing. But admittedly, it's a little nitpicking here when you consider, <laughs> consider the body of work over the last five years. North is really struggling right now offensively. Well, only Old L. Wilson has scored. Everybody else has yet to find it. All right. Well, Taylor Johnson gets on the board, but you're right. It's been a struggle. North bringing the pressure. Omar Brown is the new face to the team this year. 
So he's really been able to come in and step up defensive-wise. He's got these long arms. Great for deflecting balls, if you just seen. Are they playing basketball, or are they trying out for the secondary in football here? Maybe <laughs> Lola Tyler here. Like you said earlier, are most of them are football players. Right, a lot many football crossovers. Odell Wilson dishes inside to Brown. He's blocked. Delamine with the hesitation move. It's still up for grabs. Brown comes up with it. EP comes up with the block. You got to give credit to both teams, though, for playing straight up defense. And that's going to be a block on. That's going to be Eli's Eli second foul. And that's unfortunate. Now, there is no restricted zone at the high school level, so. Right. That could have gone either right. way. Right. Campbell was in a position. He could have gone after it if he wanted. But free throws are coming for Austin Andrews. Austin Andrews. Four games this year with 20 points or more, but again, this is an EP team. Really consistent. Andrews splits though, but this EP run continuing to grow. DJ Johnson tried to time the pass, almost got the steal. Taylor Johnson weaving through traffic. Taylor Johnson's really struggling trying to get the ball into the basket. Oh, now he's great steal by Johnson. And there he's slamming home. That's one way to make sure the ball goes in the hoop. Just like his brother used to do. And that's the first field goal from someone other than Wilson. We'll see if that gets North going. Look out. The great thing about Johnson and his athleticism is once he gets started, it's hard to slow that guy down. Christensen fakes the three. Great ball fake. Eden Prairie has some great ball movement right now. Dobbs, short on the three. It goes right to the hands of Christensen, though, and he'll shoot two. To Eden Prairie's advantage, whenever you have a great three-point shooting team, it's going to spread the floor more. It's going to cause the defense to work harder to guard those shooters. Connor Christensen averaging 15.7. Free throws have not been going in for either side so far. Definitely not. I have a feeling this game is going to come down to those free throws. Christensen splits. Now, Christensen, one of four sophomores who starts for the Eagles, their combined GPA, 3.9. Nice. They do not mess around when it comes to the studies, and that's something that Larry McKenzie stresses too with his North players. All right, we've got Nazir Lamine on the board. So now we've got scores from three North players. Austin Andrews goes transition, warp speed to the basket. Traveling violation on the Polders. Pretty big media presence tonight, Star Tribune and KSTB covering this game, but uh, I feel I gotta give credit to those who are risking life and limb down there with how much these players are flying. It looks like uh, one of our camera operators had a stumble. Yeah, North is not the biggest gym in the city conference, so those inlines do get pretty tight. I've been to smaller gyms 
Try Highland Park. Oh, yeah, that's a tiny one. Como oh, Park's yeah. another one. Oh, yeah. Como Park, there's almost no room back there. But Eli Campbell has plenty of room to knock down a three. There's that, that long-distance jumper. He's really stepped up his uh, his jumper over the summer. And now that Wilson is getting some support, we'll see if it sparks a run here from the Polars. It's a seven-point margin, 23-16. High, low, and look out. Holloman and Andrews collide. And those young bodies are able to jump right back up. Yeah, that if that were us, I think we would have still be on the ground. Be on the ground. We would have called it. I think we would have retired. We'd be like, yep, we're done. <laughs> Definitely would have been done. But I'm guessing you, even though you know maybe the girls don't jump as high, you had your fair share of battles down low. Oh yeah, it gets it gets rough in there. Do you have any stories of having to defend against other post players? Oh yeah, whenever we play a larger school, Woodbury, Armstrong, there's definitely battles down low. Definitely, those are the nights when you come home and you wake up the next morning like, oh, where'd I get this bruise from? Oh, oh, that's, got it from the Woodbury Post. Are there any battle scars that you share or regale your players or fans about your playing days? Uh, Having to <laughs> go in with the bruisers like that? Oh, mainly just broken fingers. So that's the most obvious battle scar that I carry. I've broken almost every finger on my hand from basketball. Worth every break. We've got a foul, and that's the last to give for the Polders. 8.50 remains in the first half. EP going for the touchdown pass. Another transition look, John Henry completes it. That play was nicely executed. Eden Prairie's fast and they're able to spread the floor and, and they're get getting back. It, and they're getting it done with a six player rotation so far. Elamine out to Campbell, he's left alone. Bullseye. That is not the, Eden Prairie's gonna have to adjust to that. He's gonna hit those if he's open like that every single time. I don't think David Flum was happy about him being that open. Christensen with the answer, yes. Oh. Campbell, again. Heat check. Heat check, yeah. <laughs> Although we were talking beforehand, Steph Curry's won a couple NBA titles, and that's trickled down to this level. Everybody wants to shoot the deep threes now. It is one way to extend the defense, but. It's not everybody's shot to no. take. No. I don't think you could shoot. I don't think that was your shot in high school Definitely or college. Definitely not. You, you just stuck to the paint. Definitely not. That was my area. The paint was your area. Did you ever try a three-pointer? I did, actually. I made less than I shot. <laughs> <laughs> I think even Steph Curry would make less than he attempted. Odell Wilson at the line. And he's well known in the North community. Uh, he once played for Crystal Flynn, I believe, on youth teams. Uh, Crystal coached her two sons until Marquise and Trey went to North here. And so she could tell you many stories about Odell and could as well. Oh, yeah. North will call a timeout, and Wilson, let's just say he can be quite the goofball, a very shy and stealthy goofball. But definitely a goofball. I remember doing a piece on Taylor or Tyler Johnson for the Minnesota Prep Spotlight Show, and I'm interviewing Tyler, and Odell Wilson was uh, snuck up behind us to mess with our psyche a little bit. Yeah. He's a really sweet kid, but definitely a big goofball. Very innocent-minded. I hope he stays that way throughout his adulthood. <laughs> I don't think that will be a problem. I do know uh, Biggs is expecting to play a very good game today. It is his mother's birthday today. All right. So wow. her birthday wish was that her son play very well today. Well, he's off to a good start with nine points. Yes. And one of the many... Uh, fan favorites here at Minneapolis North. Yeah, Biggs definitely has a, a big fan club, no pun intended. How many times have you used that line? Just once, that was Just the first once. time. 
It's easy to like Biggs. He's a really likable kid. Very nice kid. DJ Johnson, what a move. Oh. Johnson is fast. Beep, beep. This kid, he's got some speed as well, Holloman. Trent Witz told me he's already too good for junior varsity. As an eighth grader. And even last year when he got some minutes as a seventh grader, everybody really high on his potential. And I know he's been getting some attention when he goes to those AAU, those summer league events. Yes. A lot of folks think Trey John Holloman could be a future centerpiece of this North program. Trey had a big summer this summer. Got a lot of national recognition with this talent. Eden Prairie, though, with a 12-point lead. Started the game on a 29 run. And that pass is incomplete. That'll bring up second down and seven. And speaking of goofballs, Trey could be one himself, although he's more he's more of a ham. Odell Wilson is the stealthy one. Oh, Trey loves camera time. I agree. I agree, Mike. <laughs> I wonder if he got that from his mother. <laughs> Maybe, because Crystal can be a ham as well. Uh, <laughs> there it is. Odell Wilson, the high-low play, LME with the dime. Well, Crystal can be a ham, too. I remember when she pulled off that no-look pass with no glasses, and I have a video clip of it. She bragged about it until I brought it up. She, <laughs> then she wasn't so... Uh, it, it wasn't so gleeful about it when I had the video of her. No, she played a Gophers alumni game. She lost her glasses on the fast break, so she pulled off a no-look dish to a teammate who scored. Yeah, she's she was talented then. She's talented well, now. She got to a yeah, she got to an NCAA tournament yes, in '94. Yes, she did. She's a wealth of knowledge. Our girls should she be She was very an official fortunate. for many years, went to a lot of state tournaments. So she knows the rules, and she makes sure to let the refs that are refing our games know that she knows the rules. Well, she's well respected. I know a lot of coaches were happy to see her get that first coaching job after. Eden Prairie forcing the turnover. It's a great block by Dobbs. 5.55 left in the first half, 32-22. Now, and this is why North schedules these tough games. And not only does it prepare them, but it gives fans like ourselves some great matchups to look forward to. Eden Prairie does a great job of ball faking. You'll see that whenever they get the ball, there's a fake that comes before the pass, which annoys defenders. Well, That's being great annoying is a being yep. annoying is a coveted asset on offense. Great basketball. Now Sierra Lamine steps into a three and drills it. Right. Lamine up to five. North is really going to have to step up on their defense if they want to contend with what Eden Prairie is bringing. They're being aggressive. They're taking those shots. They're not holding anything back right now. It's going to be adapting to the ball fake. Oh, yeah. That seems to be Eden oh, Prairie's yeah. strength. And, and just, there's another one. Oh. It almost works. But there's another example. Yep. They thought Andrews was going to go for it. Holloman fires the three. Bullseye. We've got more years to look and see that. Four and a half. And with all the talk about Trey, we should point out that Marquise is playing college hoops at yes, North Dakota State College of Science. Omar Brown with the steal. North looking to get a run going here and fire up this crowd. Johnson, too far underneath, but he'll shoot two. Taylor Johnson, 23.8. What would you make of the growth and maturity? Because, as we said, he was a role player under Tyler, and now he's leading this team, averaging nearly 24 a game. Yes. You don't see that kind of breakout often in your senior year. When you, when you do see that, it just lets you know that it's been there the whole time that this talent was there last year. But good players will be able to play their role and then step up as a leader and make that transition a lot smoother when it's already there. We saw that out of Morgan Hill last night. She only scored 11 in Minneapolis South's win over Stillwater, but her younger sister 
Jade stepped up big time, and the Tigers knocked off the Ponies. Oh, I just adore, I adore those hill girls. Those, those hill girls there's going to be another one next year. I know. I'm not looking forward <laughs> to that, but I do love them. Well, Their family is very sweet. I, I think it, it's one of those you're looking forward to it until you have to play against Yes, them. yes. And how about Johnson? Whoa, look. Oh. <laughs> DJ Johnson. The athleticism. He's been the, I've been the most impressed with him. And he's a senior coming off the bench, but he may be the fastest guy out there. He has to be the fastest guy out here. I wonder if he runs track. And he's got a few yeah, crossovers, too. I was wondering too. the same. You know, there's some guys who play on football. And oh. EP calls a timeout. That camera went off the monopod. <laughs> Robin has seen a lot of action down there. Speaking of crowds, we should point out that Paige Beckers is in attendance tonight. Her stepbrother is on the Eden Prairie varsity team. And how about Paige? She's a sophomore, and she's already getting looks from UConn. Taking over the state. That girl is talented. She's done everything but win a state title, and you have to wonder when that moment will come. I have a feeling it's coming soon. I have a feeling it's coming soon. So the Polars, they've got it to within four. How do they get past EP and take the lead here? They're going to have to get back on defense, and they can't let those shooters get into their rhythm because those, those early three-point shots really have really killed them. That being said, with how quickly these two teams move, it's produced a lot of opportunities for North to get a steal and run out. And... It, Officials timeout. What do we have here? Oh, well, there's too many players on the court. Looks like uh, North wanted to uh, try uh, to take a defensive advantage. Too many players. That's going to be a bench technical. Yep. They sent six players on the floor. I know you're trying to get that seat. <laughs> I don't think that's how you're supposed to. That's not how you much. get the no, job that's done. Not how you us that's usually not part of your defensive scheme. Did that ever happen to you when you were a player? Too many women on the floor? Um, not high school. Coach Johnson well, uh, Patterson. Well, Faith too smart for that. Very smart. She was not going to allow that to happen. Unfortunately, <laughs> Eden Prairie can't get those two freebies in. That's going to be a moment you laugh about at the end of the year. As a coach, the Larry McKenzie has to be flustered. Furious about that mishap but you know at the end of the season that's going to be something they look back on and laugh remember when we tried to send six players yeah <laughs> oh yeah it's like the one time i think it didn't get called san antonio or da at dallas had six players on the floor and nobody called it there's a lot that happens in the nba that's not called <laughs> let's just say that lots of travels those two minute reports oh goodness imagine if we had those at lower levels <laughs> christensen there's another ball fake that sets it up for Johnson. He missed from the corner. Scrum for the rebound is won by the Polars. They're going to try to run out, and they will. Taylor Johnson with the finish. So North catches a break. They get it down to two. 32-30. Great screen. Quarter. Polars, Great. Trail. Polars trail by as much as 11. Campbell is fouled from behind. And that is why Campbell wears leggings, and that is why you see a lot of professionals wear leggings. Without those leggings, is uh, there'd be definitely. no knee. Yeah, you'd have, there, you'd, there'd be no. Without those leggings, I would hate to imagine what the your skin. kneecaps would look like. Bone. Right, that you skin that body right down to the bone. So free throws coming for Elijah Campbell. He only had two attempts all year. He made them both. He averages 11.2. 45% three-point shooter. Great. He's a great three-point shooter. And he won't oh, get the friendly bounce get there. The drop. Well, Eden Prairie, 5 of, 11, 5 of 11 from the line. Minneapolis North, 3 of 8. That's going to be one thing both coaches it's gonna come down to free might, throws. Work, might work on in future practices. 
Christensen out to Dobbs. Kluge. Kluge has yet to score. But Kluge is doing a great job uh, defensive-wise. He's gotten some great blocks. He's doing some great assists. And a carrying violation. Paul Mingla, it's a turnover. That being said, though, what you talked about with Kluge, you know, we often talk about points, especially at this level, and sometimes you can overlook the those defensive intricacies. Effort. Right, defensive effort or the hustle plays. DJ? Yeah. We just got word from a reliable source that DJ Johnson plays running back and cornerback for the football team. Of course, Eden Prairie synonymous with greatness in high school football. Definitely. Led by Mike Grant, all those state tournament titles. So fast. I've never seen, I haven't, can't remember the last time I saw a guy go that fast. Odell Wilson. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That gets the crowd going. Great move by Biggs. Really showing out tonight. North trail by as much as 11. They have a one point lead. Kluge, deep three. Rattles out, rebound. Taylor Johnson, North, looking to build on this run. He's going to take it himself. Can't bake it in. Biggs. Rebound by Biggs. Let's see what he, oh. Oh, he got into it in traffic, but you can't fall him for the effort. EP, are they going to go? Yes, they are. Three is there for John Henry. So many twists and turns. It's gonna be, I knew it'd be a great game. Once North woke up offensive wise. North three and one, Eaton Curry seven and one. North the number two team in 2A, EP the number four team in 4A. Briefly held the number one spot. El Amin sealed off. Biggs there, in there's trouble. Lots of reaching fouls that are, they're really letting them play tonight. Lots of reaching happening on both uh, on both sides of the court. It, well, and I've seen this crew before. They often are on hand for big North games in, in conference or non-conference. And I think it's one of those, you know, they'll let them play unless it gets real chippy out there. Yeah. And it's not to say they haven't called fouls. We've seen some pretty. Oh, yeah. Blatant oh, yeah. ones that have been called, but I think those 50-50s, you know, or they're maybe really those, let, yeah, they're letting they're that gonna, go. They're not, they're not calling every hand check or contact, if you will. Uh, I think they're letting the players sort this out, and I'm guessing you're not going to see them get involved too much unless they have to intervene. And we've got some veteran officials out here, so I'm pretty confident they know where to draw the line. Well, Ralford. The guy back there, I don't know his last name, I only know him as Ralford. He would often officiate Howard Pulley Summer League games, if you remember those days. Yes, Ralford was actually one of my early AAU coaches. <laughs> and a lot of these officials were former students of the game. Yes. Crystal, Crystal Flynn, for example. Ralford, uh, Tim Layton, who works at the high school league, he still officiates high school basketball. Kevin Anderson, his son plays at with the SMB football team. Oh, that's his dad. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Eden Prairie going to hold for the last shot here and try to extend this two-point lead, and a foul, a foul was called on Campbell. North out of fouls to give, so that's going to mean free throws for John Henry, but given the difficulties with free throws, that may not be a bad strategy here. Well, Make that was actually on it. Omar Brown. Okay, well, yep. someone's paying attention. <laughs> and it's not me. It's going to be Brown's second foul. Nobody in many serious foul trouble, though, at the end of the no. first half, and that's good to see. I'm glad that wasn't on Eli, because that definitely would have put him in. Would have put him a in a problem. Pickle. Yeah, for the second half. So one and one, and Austin Andrews blanks it, so that foul works to North's benefit, and Holloman tripped from behind. Eden Purry out of fouls to give, so Holloman will have a chance to perhaps tie this. I think Trey needs some tights now. Hit the ground pretty hard there. We've seen bodies hit the floor all over the place. That's what happens when you're playing aggressive. And I'm guessing you know, when you were a player in high school and college, uh, that was you down there. You had to tough it out, I guess. I, I did not fall often. Now. I think it's no, more you that- you had a pretty good foundation, though. Yes, pretty solid, didn't pretty fall down too often. I'm sure your center of gravity was on point. Yes, it was much uh, much thinner then. Much thinner. So. <laughs> well, 
I think we all get a little bigger as we get older. Holloman splits. And Eden Prairie elects to run out the clock. The Eagles throw the early punch with a 20-9 run. North answers back and makes it a one-point game, 35-34. I can't wait to see what the second oh, half has for us. the second half is going to be probably more, hopefully more exciting than the first half has been. <laughs> if that's the case, uh, I might need another Pepsi or two. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to need a little more sugar to match the energy. Uh, that being said, though, what should we look for in the second half with these two teams? I think, well, I'm hoping that we'll look for more bigs down low in the post. He's been really strong down there. Started out with the with first eight points for North. I also think that Eden Prairie is going to come back out and their, their three-point shot's going to be right back on. We'll take a break and bring you the second half. You're watching high school boys basketball. The Eagles lead the Polars 35-34. Welcome back to North Community High School. Mike Peden and Tisa Mitchell. Tisa will rejoin me in a minute. Eden Prairie holds a one-point lead over Minneapolis North, 35-34. First half numbers, Austin Andrews has 11. Connor Christensen has nine. John Henry has eight. Those are your notables for the Polars. Odell Wilson leads with 13. Eli Campbell has seven. Taylor Johnson and Nasir Elamine have a pair of fives. Eagles got out to a 29 run. North was able to close the margin once. Odell Wilson got some support on offense, and as Tisa Mitchell returns, you know, these non-conference games, as we said, draw some big names. Uh, we mentioned Paige Beckers, and I see Raina Suggs as well from Hopkins here. You know, everybody kind of knows everybody in the sport of basketball. And to see all these names, well, and even for folks like the Hopkins folks, you know, they often draw a lot of kids from the inner city. Oh, yeah. And uh, it's not that far of a trek, so when they see a big game like this, you know, they want to be here for it. And a lot of the kids are friends. A lot of the kids are friends. They play AAU together in the summer. So it's a good opportunity for on a Wednesday night, or most games are on Tuesdays or Thursdays, to so come check out your friends. Yeah, and, and as the adage goes, game respects game, men or women. It does, Definitely, though. Mike. You know, the, the Olympics, remember when Kobe Bryant's last year, he had some pretty eloquent analysis of Rachel Bannum when she was a gopher and that 60-point game. Oh, yeah. What did he tweet out to her? I forget what he tweeted out, but someone asked her, him about it in a press conference, and he talked about the side bait she pulled off to beat Iowa. Uh, last year, the North, the North High Lady Polars actually had a chance to witness that firsthand. We were invited to a game. And it was Draymond Green who had said, as Holloman has fouled from behind, that he learns a lot more about the game watching the WNBA. I believe it. And the WNBA is much more fundamental. It's funny to think about with the conversations, and you still get your women's basketball haters, for of lack course. of a better word. But when you talk to the players, men or women, they all respect each other. They all understand what it takes to be a great athlete in this sport. And I don't see the boys disparage the girls or vice versa. You know, they all support Not each other. Not at all, especially here at North. We have a lot of support from our guys. And we, <laughs> as you, if you look around the, cloud, the crowd, you'll see our girls are here cheering and, you, and supporting just as much as they do for us. And you don't even have to be a student at North to be a fan of some of these players. I remember a couple years ago when Hopkins and Minneapolis North met, one of my friends, Nia Holly, couldn't get to that game and told me how steamed or how angry she was that she couldn't be there. Yeah. Because she knows a lot of the North players. She knew a lot of the players at the time. Knew a lot of the Hopkins players, obviously. Christensen, too strong on the three. Trey Holloman made both free throws, by the way. So North retakes the lead, 36-35. And Campbell misses the long two. Rebound by Johnson. He should have, should have gone behind the line. He would have made it. He would have made it if he would have take, take, that was taken a, a couple steps back. It was too <laughs> he close. Was too close. <laughs> well, and they tell you in the modern era, that's the worst shot you can take with two pointers just inside very, the line. A very low percentage. Well, it, th And if you take a couple steps back, it's worth more. Well, and that's it. Even if you make it, or it doesn't matter what your percentage is, it's just the, it's the least efficient shot. That's what a lot of coaches will tell you. 
Andrews oh. did a great job of getting Biggs in the air, allowing him to offensively do what he needs to do. And we got Johnson coming right back down. Blink and you'll miss something. 38-37. John Henry goes up. Can't get the bounce. Rebound is tipped to Taylor Johnson. He's going to weave through traffic. A uh, little I, out of control. Yeah, may have been better off waiting for help. Now EP. They kick out. Christensen knocks down the corner three. I just don't think Eden Prairie is going to miss too many of those open three-point opportunities tonight. Or all season, actually. Well, they've got a great list of three-point shooters and we talked about the team GPA among the sophomores the Eagles also take part in two community service projects a year Elamine oh. look out and uh, it's these situations I do not want to beat those photographers down there Go oh no ahead. those <laughs> balls are going right toward them Oh, in these situations, uh, on mistakes, you, you do kind of start to see the age of some of the players. Uh, the ball went out on Trey. His face just kind of dropped like a sad little puppy. <laughs> uh, older well, players well, know what, to control 13, that. Exactly. 13 years 14, old, I think. 14. You so and I are considerably older. Yeah. Austin Andrews hits the reverse. He's up to 15. Uh, to be that young again. I know. When both of us were thinner, I had more hair, <laughs> you were probably more athletic. I definitely got to run a little faster. You could run a little faster. Oh, Whoa. Oh, tough foul. The class well, of these, the class, the classmanship definitely comes out on hard fouls that way. You'll see Johnson made sure that uh, that uh, Dobbs, Dobbs. Was, Dobbs was okay. That was a hard foul. It definitely could have been a lot worse than it was. Well, on this North team, you, know, you don't see any animosity. They are respectful of everyone they face. In their Class A days, they would have a lot of bonding moments with Rushford Peterson. North went over to Rushford Peterson a couple years ago, and then afterward, the two teams had dinner together. Oh, and yeah, and I the remember Trojans that. showed them yep. uh, I remember a little bit that. of farm life. And the Polars that. really enjoyed it. And on Saturday, the team will head over to the Pentagon for the annual Barefoot Classic. The Barefoot Classic, you've never heard of it? Not it's, at all. It's one of the big annual events. Well, you got to talk to the boys team a little more. So it, I believe the event is a charity drive for Samaritan's Feet, one of the fundraising organizations, well, one of the charity organize, organizations, if I can get it out. And that one's an interesting game because the coaches go shoeless. Oh my. The players obviously need to keep their sneakers oh, on. Oh, we but. hope so. <laughs> we hope so. But that's one of the staples, and Trent told me they love going to that. He said North is pretty much an annual invite. They've got a standing invitation there. And they love going there last year. They're looking forward to returning this year because the Pentagon, if you're a fan of basketball, that's one of the facilities you have to check out. I'm surprised you weren't aware of that. Me too. And the Pentagon, they have many events throughout the year. A lot of Minnesota teams make the trek. De La Salle, both the boys and girls teams go there for a game. We'll have to try to get our Lady Polars out there soon. Well, you've got an inside track with the head coach. So I'd say send her a note. <laughs> Polars down by two. Holloman, nice. nice dish to dish Brown, to but he couldn't finish. Or, well, well. or that was... That was a miss disguised as a pass for Odell Wilson. Christensen, three. Oh. Can't get the Plinko bounce to fall. Oh, almost. And unfortunate. Well, there's another example of age. Yep. Trey got a little too hoppy. Just a little bit. But he's not going to stop being aggressive, which no. is something you cannot teach regardless of age. He's going to play hard still. He's going to be aggressive the entire game. He also has his mother yelling at him. From the crowd. <laughs> He's got two coaches <laughs> who are on him. Nice Lugie kick for three. out. Short. It was a nice kick out by Andrews. He's a very good post player. He knows when to go up and when to kick out. Another thing you can't teach with post players.
Johnson. Can't hit the step back, and the rebound goes to Dobbs. He runs into a wall with Taylor Johnson, and Eagles turn it over. Wall just kind of slipped out of his hands there. What would it be like to have two coaches yelling at you? You've got Larry McKenzie and Crystal Flynn. Not just any coach. If you're Trey Hall. <laughs> yes, you've got a Hall of Fame member, six-time state tournament champion, and your mother doesn't have a state title just yet, but she's officiated many just state tournaments. Just knowledgeable. Well, and she oh. was on hand for that triple overtime thriller, Park Center and Marshall. Oh, in the state tournament uh, yes. a couple years back. When Michaela Hayes got her first one. Holloman fouled from behind on the rebound by Dobbs. That will be the fourth team foul on the Eagles. The third, I should say. It's the second personal on Dobbs. Trey really showed his athleticism on that rebound. He got really high up there to grab that. Now, speaking of the North and their tough schedule, Eden Prairie you look at their non-conference opponents. They'll end the season against Creighton Durham Hall oh, at St. Goodness. Thomas. They also have East Ridge and De La Salle. So they could end up playing Tough a couple of number ones. Yes, and by they the end of the season. At one point. And we mentioned the non-conference or the conference play. They also get Woodbury a top ten team this year in four. Tough so. schedule for EP. <laughs> New player in for the pullers. They are all over the floor. That's Devon Townley Jr. That's another future centerpiece in the words of Trent Witts. Dobbs can't hit the 15-footer on the other end. And we are stuck at 42. So I guess when your family expands, are, are you have a situation where uh, your offspring will have two coaches yelling at <laughs> yelling at him or her or oh probably probably we're really looking forward to our family expanding soon and my husband I didn't know if that was if you had publicly revealed that no, I was taking but a chance, we're not but. we're not hiding anything well, it's a little too late if you see me it's a little <laughs> too late to hide what's happening well soon for I'm us. sure everyone is happy to see that uh, you're we've going already, to experience parenthood oh yeah and we've I'm already sure, got bigs well you've got bigs and I'm sure Crystal We'll give you a few pointers. Yeah, oh yeah. But we have bids for coaches that want our child. Want our child to come play for them when it's time. Lugie for three. Oh. Christensen with the O board. Goes up. No good. Eden Prairie Henry is really getting it. in great position for every rebound offensive wise. This has a state tournament feel, doesn't it? It does. Neither team is holding anything back. Dobbs races down to the bucket but can't put it in. Now Holloman turns on the Jets and backs off. Didn't see a lane and that's a smart play to that make. That was a very smart play. Holloman. Going to the basket. Can't oh, float it in. A little in. bit off. Let's hope he, uh, no fouls come here out of, oh deep from Dobbs. But short. EP, that's been an Achilles heel somewhat. They've had some spurts. Eagles call timeout. They've had some spurts where they knock down triples and other times where they've been unable to fall. They're still finding ways to get open, but you know the saying in basketball, live by the three, die by the three. Exactly. And they're they're putting them up there. They're not they're not letting down. They know where their strengths lie. But looking at that non-conference schedule, we mentioned Woodbury, De La Salle, Creighton Durham Hall. Champlin Park uh, falling off a little bit. And Eastridge, so EP is gonna be tested. And you know, they've got a little motivation on their shoulder. They lost to Chaska a couple of years ago, or last year, in a two-point heartbreaker in the 2-4A section final that sent Chaska to the state tournament. Those two-point losses, those single-digit losses are the worst. Well, that happened to North twice in Class A against Maranatha before you came in. And Maranatha was their thorn in the first couple of years of Larry McKenzie's tenure. And then 
their seniors graduated. North was able to get over the hump. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with 2A this year because North has pretty much dominated 1A. It's something even the coaching staff isn't afraid to admit. And they're hoping to get up to 3A or 4A someday, but I think they're all excited to go into a class where they're a better fit. Yeah, yeah. When I was here, we were 3A. Eden Prairie, not a well, offensive rebound. It went right to Kluge. So the Andrews miss. Here's Henry. Bullseye. There it is. Andrew Smith does no harm, and the Eagles take a three-point lead. North is going to have to do a better job of getting on those rebounds. Something I notice boys don't do as well as girls is box out. I remember a couple of years ago, as Odell Wilson is going to take it to the rack. Can't get the bounce. Tanisha Scott, the De La Salle head coach, would show game film from the 2015 or 2016 WNBA Finals. Not because of the missed shot clock violation. Kluge knocking down the three from the top of the key, but because, and that last possession, Minnesota didn't box out. That allowed Neck and yep. to get the put back. Yep. And then you saw, same scene a year later, game five. That didn't happen. Everybody was boxed out. <laughs> <laughs> and Minnesota. Got their comeuppance. Rebounding, big part of success. And that last shot was by Kluge. I think those are his first points of the night. They are. Brown, used up the dribble, needs help. Oh, that's exactly what Eden Prairie wanted. Eden Prairie has really stepped up their defense in this session, in this, uh, this short minute time. And in the process, they have built their lead up to six. And those three-pointers will really get that lead up quickly. North is going to have to do a better job of rebounding and not giving them those second chance opportunities. Oh, great hands by Brown here. Oh, and then he steps out of bounds. You're not going to fault him for that, though. And we mentioned the list of notable names among the current crop of prep players. Well, ben Coleman, 1980 Minneapolis North graduate in attendance. He spent a few years in the NBA, as you may know, part of the draft class of 84. Drake Dobbs. <laughs> EP with three straight threes, they're up by nine. This is similar to what happened in the first half. The three-pointers really allowed Eden Prairie to get that, that quick lead. Eli with a little shake and bake. And this is see what you're made of time for the Polars here after they go down by nine. After they worked hard to regain the lead. Dobbs drives. And we'll shoot two. It was a late call, on, late foul on Biggs there. Those are always tough to take. 7.33 left. Oh, I that's his first foul. It is just his first. Not a lot of fouls in this game. I've seen games where they pile up. Hopkins is one example just because of how athletic they are. A high school version of backyard basketball, if you will. <laughs> I can't wait for this year's version, but when those two teams meet, you can forget about defense. Dobbs knocks down both free throws. But it's time to see what you're made of time for the bowlers. And they noted just the staggered start to their schedule. They don't have much of a flow yet. Larry McKenzie time calls a timeout. But there's still a lot of time, 7-17. So we mentioned Ben Coleman. He was here, well-known among the coaching staff, and another famous alum joined the coaching staff this year, Khaled el who you got to see as a player, I believe. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He was a senior when I was a freshman. Part of the 
three-peat for Minneapolis yep. North, including the two years where you had the Sweet 16 format for the boys. And we were yep. talking before the game uh, what he did for this program, how he galvanized Minneapolis North, won a championship at UConn, got featured on David Letterman. His uh, remark, we shocked the world when they upset Duke. Yeah. But my favorite moment, we were talking about this, he hits a buzzer beater in the 96 state tournament at the St. Paul <laughs> Civic Center. And in a euphoric celebration, he and his teammates just jumped over the scores table. High school league staffers are bracing for dear life as they were just so happy they were trying to find any way they could to get to their fans. Yes. I don't know if you were at that game, but. I wasn't at that game. I think I was only uh, 13. Were you watching on TV? Or? Watching on TV. Have you ever, I don't think I've seen a celebration like that since. I don't think so. I don't think that's allowed anymore. <laughs> I think they make sure to put that in the rules before you get there. <laughs> but it was exciting to watch, knowing that's the school that I was going to. And then you didn't do so badly yourself. No, nope. Went to the state tournament <laughs> all four years. Tomorrow, high well, you had tomorrow more. Maury Horton, I yes, believe. Yes, great teammates. Crystal Taylor for a year. And surprisingly, everyone is coaching. Dead ball rebound to the Eagles. You sacrificed your fingers in the process, but I, I think you made a few friends. <laughs> now, well, from the looks of it, though, I'd say your fingers are still working. Yeah, they, they work just fine. Not as straight as they could be, but no. they work just fine. Could be worse. Definitely. I've never torn an ACL or any other ligaments, so that's <laughs> very happy about that. I'll take fingers over ligaments any day. So EP, let's see what they can do here. They may start killing some clock at this stage of the game. Very patient with the ball. With no Which shot clock, they can do that. They can do that. Smart play. Smart basketball. It's going to force the North to step up and play a little tighter defense which in turn could make you sacrifice some fouls. And both with several to give, so EP just eating up clock and... And Drake Dobbs draws a foul on Campbell. It's gonna be his third, but at this point in the game, that's nothing to really worry about. Time could be a bigger opponent at this stage. Definitely. 6.05 left. Drake Dobbs, as we noted, season high 33 against North St. Paul, top 10 team. North St. Paul, part of a deep section, Creighton Durham Hall, the number one team right now in that section. But North St. Paul, Tartan, Woodbury is there, Eastridge. You've got five capable teams who could get out of there. We'll have to see in the case of Minneapolis North. They picked up a big win over Brooklyn Center in the Above the Rim Classic. Well, the officials let that go, and they called the blocking foul on the Eagles. Now, both teams still with several to give, so it's of little consequence. But if you're David Flum, oh man, I think you might see it a little differently. Yeah. Johnson drives and scores. Nice aggressive move to the basket. He went from zero to 60 in 3.5. Yes, he did. But don't tell him to shut up and drive. Sorry. So that makes it an eight point game, but EP still in the catbird seat here. We got What's a steal, oh, almost a steal by Elamine, Azir Elamine. Well, and that's the thing. North's going to have to step up the aggression. That's going to open the door for the Eagles. Definitely. There's no way Biggs is going to catch up with uh, E.J. Andrews. Johnson there. And Austin Andrews got the bucket. From a nice dish by Johnson. Wilson can't post up. 
Andrews is a really smart defender. He's been playing Biggs really well all night. Biggs has really had to work for every point that he's gotten. It was a great pass. Dobbs faking the three. Eden Prairie is going to work more time off the clock, which is very smart at this point with a 10-point lead. And North may have to start using up their fouls here. Depending on who this foul is on, you're, you're probably going to see a sub soon. It's on Johnson. Just his third. But you will see a sub. Omar Brown in for Nasir El Amin. EP stepped on the line. Three oh, second three second violation, yeah. You don't see that often at this level. Yeah, those they usually clear out of there pretty quickly. But there was lots of short passes happening in that lane. And you want to do a good job of getting out of there. Wilson tried to dish to Holloman. And Holloman recovers in time for the score. But North cannot trade buckets here. They got to get some stops if they want to come back from an eight point deficit. And you see them stepping up the aggression here, double teaming, trying to get that steal. Really Biggs letting them play here. It. Campbell was able to tip it and stay in bounds. Johnson. A little out of position nice there. Wilson and one. Nice rebound by Biggs. We haven't heard much out of Odell Wilson in the second half. That's a big basket though for the Polars. Let's hope he completes this three-point play here to put the put the lead back down to five. Well, even if he doesn't, it makes it a two-possession game. And we talked about the tough opponents EP has. We mentioned they're going to South Dakota on Saturday as Wilson does complete the three-point play. They're going to Chicago on the 13th for the... Oh, the MLK. Play, uh, well, they'll be, yes, and they'll be playing North Lawndale and Corliss. Yeah. Two Illinois schools. So this is a team that's going to rack up a lot of miles here. And on the 20th, they go to Caledonia. So this will be a well-traveled Minneapolis North team by season's end. But it tells you just how much respect they have attained. Austin Andrews puts down another reverse. Makes it a seven-point game. Andrews is doing a little um, body hooking that a lot of times you'll see the players get called for. So I wonder if the refs are going to let that continue. If McKenzie complains about it, I'm sure they'll take notice to it a little bit more. <laughs> but it's going to say it says something about the respect Larry McKenzie has. Of course, he's an author as well as a state tournament champion. And this North team that they're getting invited to so many out-of-state events. It's great opportunities for the boys. Did you ever get those chances when you were playing uh, to go out-of-state? We didn't go very far. We just went over the, over the Wisconsin. <laughs> Odell Wilson goes up to 20 with that post-up move. Well, you got, I'm sure you got to travel a little more when you went to Southeast Missouri. Yes, we did travel all over, so that was a lot of fun. North bringing the defense up again. Eagles call a timeout. That, I almost thought Brown was going to get hit with a foul there. I actually there. did, too. And a lot of, lot of body go. happening there, a lot but, of body contact. But again, the officials letting a lot of the, this contact go. 2.44 left. I'm guessing you were in this situation a few times as a player. Oh, yeah. How do you, if you're north, how do you erase this five-point deficit? They're stepping up the defensive pressure. Is there anything else they need to do? You have to use your advantages on offense. You have to be able to get the ball to the person that's hot. And if you're Eden Prairie? Keep doing what they're doing. They're, they're being aggressive. They're going to the basket. They're taking their shots. They're getting offensive rebounds. It's the Polars that are going to have to step up if they want to win this game. Now, 
I have a more important question for you. Would you want to do this again? <laughs> Go, come back to the booth. It's been a lot of fun, Mike. You make it a lot. You make it really easy. You're fun to be around. Who paid you to say that? <laughs> I'll take my payment after the game, Mike. Thank you. Well, if you want to come back, like I said, we'll be here for the uh, game with Minnehaha. That one at Mounds Park Academy again, Minnehaha, as you know. Still in the rebuilding phase. Right. Repairing the damage from their unfortunate explosion. But Mounds Park Academy, the Lansing Center, I covered a game there once many years ago. That's a great facility. Oh, I have not so had the opportunity. So if you want to come by for that one, I'd love to have you alongside. Because that could be a state tournament championship. Oh, yes. Game. Oh, yes. And I think I think you're free that night. I think, I think I'm free that night, too. I know originally they had check. you with De La Salle. I'm like, I hope not because... We, yeah, we switched our dates. Okay, because I, I think... Well, we... Uh, Dobbs! Oh, he got the, bounce. the bounce! That's going to be a dagger for the Polars right there. Possibly 2.30 to go. That's a big bucket nonetheless. Dobbs up to 14. We got Biggs getting double teamed now. Stay... Eden Prairie has done it. They, they recognize where the weapons are, so they've got Biggs double teamed, which means someone else is open. So the Polars are going to have to do a, do a little ball movement to find that open person. We're taking a lot of time here yeah, on this we're possession. Gonna... Just over two minutes now. Eden Prairie also has that shooter covered. Nice step back by Omar, by Omar Brown. That was Brown's first field goal, but the Polars ate up a lot of time trying to find their way open. That being said, 157 is an eternity if you can get some steals and stops. A lot can happen in 157. And an extreme example, Red Lake Wabasso boys basketball, 97. I don't know if you remember this. Red Lake was down by 13 points with just over uh, a minute, I believe. And they were able to erase that deficit and force overtime. Wabasso won the game, but for many years it stood as the highest scoring game in high school history until North and Johnson met up with the Twin Cities game in 2015 and broke it with a triple overtime thriller. The amount of knowledge you have in your head, Mike, does not cease to amaze me right now. That's what LaToya told me. <laughs> but going back to earlier conversation, I would hope they wouldn't schedule a game the same night as Minnie Haha -Ha North because no. I'm thinking if that were the case, you guys might skip that game. <laughs> You guys might Go consider watch the Haha game. What day is that game? A uh, Thursday, 25th. Or January. January 25th. She's already checking her calendar, folks. Oh, yeah, we'll definitely be at that game. Tune in at the end of the game to find out the results. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Eagles with the ball. Polars going to need a couple of stops here, and with no shot clock, you're going to have to produce it through ball pressure. EP gets across the timeline. Nothing called. John Henry scores anyway. I don't believe it. I'm not, I'm not surprised. North has been lacking on that help side defense all night. How does nothing get called there? Oh, I think that ball, that, that three-pointer was tipped. EP wins it. Here's the dagger right here. Austin Andrews with the score, and that should be enough for the Eagles to hang on. Got the lead back up to 10. It's going to be hard for the Polars to come back. That might be the basket that seals it for the Eagles. But as we've noted with North, yes. while the, you of course want to win playing these 4A teams, doesn't hurt you all that much. And as we've said before, it prepares them for postseason play. Holloman scores, but I don't think either team has a timeout left, so nobody can stop the clock oh, unless you do that. That's going to be Eli's fourth foul here. It is. And that's the last to give for the Polars. You were mentioning Wisconsin earlier. North will go to Wisconsin on the 27th when they play Kakana. 
part of the breakdown border battle. These boys have an opportunity that I really hope they realize when they are adults and they look back on this time and realize how awesome their coach set them up to experience. So, oh, great, oh, great rebound by Andrews. Put that, back. That pads is total to 24. Holloman missed the three. And don't discount this North team. This performance is certainly not indicative of their potential in 2A. They got off to a really slow start. They were able to take the lead for a minute, but that nine point run. At the beginning they, of the second, well, the middle well, of the second half. The second to break a 42 42 tie was the key stretch for the Eagles. Those three three pointers really hurt North. But to go back to North, how often do you get to play five out of state schools in your season? In one season. Most schools will get maybe one or two. North will get a lot. And this Eaton Prairie team, who knows what their potential is. You and I were talking beforehand in boys basketball. When you get these top tier matchups, you never know when an upset is coming. We see it all the time, so you don't want to put anybody through until you play the brackets, but Eaton Prairie has a good chance of getting out of section two this year and into state. And just you wait until they start playing their conference opponents. Hopkins, Wyzetta, they tough have yet conference. to face them. They tough have yet, conference. They have yet to face those two. This is a fun Eaton Prairie team. They're fast, they're disciplined, and Very disciplined. they gave North a good test that will benefit them later in the season, but it's the Eagles who, come who will out come out of top. here with a win. Eaton Prairie extends their winning streak to three. North three game winning streak is snapped. The Eagles go to eight and one. The final score is 69-57. A strong second half from Eaton Prairie. Strong second half. Yeah. That Eaton Prairie team has a really strong sophomore class. That's gonna be something great to look forward to seeing for the next few years. Austin Andrews, your player of the game with 24. John Henry and Drake Dobbs had 14. Connor Christensen had 12, much like they get every night with four and double digits. Minneapolis North led by Odell Wilson with 20. Taylor Johnson with 11. Trey John Holloman with 10. Mike, what are some things you could have think uh, could have done differently for the Polars to come out on top here? I think the three-point shooting and the ball fakes that we talked about. Oh yeah. But give credit to the Eagles. They held through, held that, withheld that North surge and got out of here with the win. They did, they really did. It's a tough Eden Prairie team. We'll try to get a word with a couple of the Eden Prairie players before we wrap things up. You're watching High School Boys Basketball. The Eagles defeat the Polars 69-57. And I'm joined by Austin Andrews, who scored a game high 24 tonight. Austin, this was a tight one. It was tied 42-42. You got on a 9.1 with three triples to pull away for good. Uh, how did you? fight off that north surge we had a rough stretch at the end of this end of the first half and we came together in the second half and started making good plays and didn't get rattled by the crowd or the other team and came together and finished the game out strong what would you make of the speed of this game because you know it wasn't the highest scoring game we've ever seen but there was no lack of agility both teams move really fast yeah minneapolis north is a quick team we knew that coming into the game and we we just came out there and we knew we can't get rattled by that and we got to keep playing how we've been playing and get off to this great start your head coach talked about the strength of the sophomore class, you among them. You know, how have you been able to develop so quickly where you go from you know, a team that was oh so close to making state last year to a team on an 8-1 start? Yeah, we've been playing together. Our sophomores have been playing together for a while, and we've had, we had some varsity experience last year. And we have some great senior leadership that's been helping us get through this great start, and we just, we're going to keep it up and not get a big hit. How do you use what happened a year ago as motivation? Because you lost a close one with Chaska, and I'm sure that always stings when you lose a playoff yeah. game like that. And here you are where your only loss was in overtime so far. Yeah, we, we think about that all the time. We're like, we remember that feeling. We're, we're, just, we're on a mission, not, never let that happen again. <laughs> well, a long way to go before you worry about yep. sections again. But what do you learn from playing a team like North? Because you know they're a 2A team, but I think most folks know they schedule like a 4A program. Yeah, we came in the game and we knew that it was going to be a one possession game and we, we knew we were going to get rattled by the crowd. We knew that's why we wanted to come here. It was, a, it was a toughness game to prove everyone that we were tough. And 
Your transition play was also key, especially late when you sealed it. Uh, how big is that transition game of yours for the Eagles? Yeah, our coach, Coach Flom, he's been doing a great job. We're, that's one of our key emphasis in the game is to keep pushing, keep pushing. And if we get rattled, if we get down, the other team makes a run, we, 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 we call it a good play and we'll get a good shot. And this is one of many tough opponents, and that's not including the late conference. So uh, what are you looking forward to as you kind of turn the corner into the second half of the season? Because you've got Eastridge, De La Salle, Woodbury. You end the season with Creighton. Uh, that's a pretty big yep. slate of teams. Yep, we have one of the toughest schedules in the state, and we know that. So we got to keep focused, and we'll, the good things keep happening. And is there anyone you want to say hi to that's watching this? Hi, Mom. <laughs> Hello, Mom, and I'm sure she's proud of yeah. your effort tonight, and I'm sure she's proud no matter yeah. what you do. Well, congrats on the win. It was a hard-fought, well-earned win. I think everybody will have a bruise or two after this one. Thank you, thank you. But uh, congrats, Sam. Maybe we'll see you at State. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So that was Austin Andrews of the victorious Eden Prairie Eagles, and that wraps up our coverage here from Minneapolis North. For Tisa and our entire crew, I'm Mike Peden. Thank you for watching.